Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm going to do my first impressions on the Blau Rock Blades BRB V BRB3 V2. Sorry. And I did not look that up. I think I got that memorized. BRB3 V2. Now, this is on loan from Naft Sergeant. Big thank you to my brother Mike for letting me check this out. Uh, it's an interesting night. This comes out of Germany, which you guys know I am German, born there. I was going to say born and raised, but I only lived there like three years. Obviously, go back, have a lot of family there, and uh, it's just kind of a heritage thing, you know. So the fact that there's some uh, German makers out there doing basically custom work, uh, it's pretty cool. And um, I wanted to check it out, so I reached out to Naf Sergeant. I was like, hey, dude, you mind? And uh, he shipped it right off like that day along with his custom Tempest from Sharp Eye Design. So, um, dude is awesome. Thank you, brother. He also sent a bunch of stickers. Oh, where are they? Hang on. Come on. Where the fuck did I put them all? I was gonna say, like, I knew I had them. So there's way more than this, but I don't even want to waste more time. He sent me a bunch of stickers. These are gonna start going into any giveaway I do. Um, thank you, Naf. You are the man. Guys, go check out Naf Sergeant. Um, I'll link his channel below, obviously. Um, he also has a Teespring where he has shirts with this design. He has his um, finger guillotine shirt as well you can order. While you're there, check out my Teespring. That link is below as well. But anyway, this is the Blau Rock Blades BRB3 V2, and uh, I really like it. Now, I'm going to tell you right away, it's not for me. It's not something I would buy. It's like 500 bucks. I would not pay that, and that's essentially because of two reasons. One, the size of my hand, and two... Uh, I'm left-handed, and this is just not the most lefty-friendly, lefty unless you're one of those lefties who doesn't care and, like, basically buys, excuse me, all the right-handed knives, like, and just deals with it. Like, I buy a lot of right-handed knives because of the channel, but I don't just deal with it, you know what I mean? Like, I sell the ones that don't work left-handed. Um, and this works to an extent, but it's not natural. And I wish I had my nimble here right now, but they're both loaned out, um, to compare because it's a good comparison in terms of how easy it is to manipulate left-handed, even though it's a right-handed knife. And I don't think I have anything else frame lock ish that would work for this, um, comparison. No, I don't. So, um, Anyway, oh, you know what I do? I have my Oz Machine Company Roosevelt here. So let's do a size comparison real quick. Uh, this is the Blau Rock BRB 3V2 and the Rosie. The Rosie's coming in at like 3.1 inches on the blade. Um, your Blau Rock looks like it's. <laughs> Probably three and a quarter inches, right? So it's very close. Um, it's not more than three and a quarter, I don't think. And then overall, I mean, obviously not much bigger. The Roosevelt is not a huge knife. Um, so you can kind of get, get a feel for it here. Here's a um, F5.5. And here is... The AD 20.5. If that makes sense. I believe that's three and a quarter too. So, or maybe 3.3. So it's somewhere in between there. Maybe 3.125. I don't know. But anyway, it's in the ballpark of these knives, right? So. And then. Again, with the Roosevelt, you can compare. I mean, they are a similar looking knife. I know Mike says that, Naf Sergeant. Um, and I kind of do see it now that I have them side by side. He was talking about more about the hole and the blade shape. And it's kind of just like a shrunken down, like thinned out Roosevelt sort of, right? Um, so what I wanted to compare these two about is the, um, 
the action left-handed, right? So they're very similar, right? Right-handed frame lock only type deal. Um, so you can't put pressure on this lock bar. If I put pressure there, I can't flip this out. If I put pressure on here, I can't flip this out. And that becomes an issue. Obviously on this one, you have this flipper tab you can also use, but we're not going to talk about that in terms of this comparison. You can middle finger flick that one real easily right-handed. You can crack this one out right-handed. Absolutely love that. The action, I'd say, closing-wise, a little smoother on this one. Less lock bar pressure. Uh, I wouldn't say smoother. I'd say less lock bar pressure. This one is smoother in the pivot, I'd say. But not by much, honestly. This is really nice. I think this has skiffs in it, uh, if I believe, if I remember correctly. This has taco bearings, but I've had skiffs in here. Same kind of thing. Anyway, left-handed. On this knife, you have to get low to be able to flick it because of that lock bar pressure. So if I go up here where I, so if I just pick this knife up, picking it up, I'm going to flick it. This is where my finger lands, my thumb. That's where I want to be to flick it, and I can't. I'm locking it up. So I have to pick it up and go down. My kind of locator point is these uh, relief cuts. I try to be down by the relief cut, and then I, I don't put any pressure on it, or I don't put enough to lock it up, and then I can flick it out, right? Um, on the Roosevelt, it's very similar. If I pick it up, for me at least, I don't know if I've trained myself, but I go like this, and I get in a spot where I can flick it. And I do think part of that is I've trained my my hand at this point to go to the spot. Like So if I pick it up, I always try to locate the clip. I try to locate the clip with my thumb and be somewhere near it, usually like right over it. So like pick it up, thumb lands right where the clip ends, and then I flick it up. And sometimes I still go too high and then it's like awkward, it's too strong of a detent, or I just can't get it out, like right now. Um, and then I just have to back down and flick it out. Now this knife is, you know, very expensive. It's, it's you know, it's one of those knives where like, I'm, I sort of make the exception for it, where like, I, I, I kind of adjusted to this knife. And I always say I don't adjust to knives, right? Um, I just sell them if, if I have to make crazy adjustments or whatever but this i'm okay with just sliding my finger down a little bit to flick it out because it works so well and everything else about this knife is just absolutely incredible um so i kind of i kind of do adjust a little bit to this guy this knife it just feels a little too low for me like it just doesn't feel as natural as as when i do it on this like i i don't know how to explain that better but like i want to be higher up you know, uh, I got lucky that time. I just kind of let go, but you know, so there you go. Like it, I guess it does work on and off. No, see now I'm like, yeah, I don't know. So I guess what I'm getting at, which is a long winded way of doing it is you can adjust to this knife left-handed and you can reliably pick it up, locate your spot, flick it, and it'll work every time. So like, it's not that bad, right? But you can lock it up. It is an issue. But so is the Roosevelt. It's an issue on there too. So it's a matter of what you're willing to um what you're willing to do. Man, this thing's gorgeous. Um so yeah, that's up to you. The flipper tab, I really find it to be I want to use the word interesting, which means I don't like it. So I, I don't like it. <laughs> you know, you, you do get used to it pretty quick, but you can't, you can't just flip it. Like, you know what I mean? Like if you wanted to just break the detent, like I like to do, you, you just end up doing that. It doesn't fly out. The detent is not dialed for a flipper tab at all. So you got to just rip it, right? You got to just rip it. And, and once you know that it works every time excellently um so it's just weird that he didn't do it differently if i if i designed this knife i would have brought it up just bring it up to the top right and square it off and then you would have had more leverage you would have had more room i don't know i just think it would have worked better um 
but it wouldn't have worked with his because it's a hidden flipper on this crazy looking handle i mean so that's impressive right um if he brought it up higher then i'm guessing that flipper tab would be right here so you'd have a longer area here this would be stretched out and then it would feel weird so i don't know um it's a design choice but like ergonomically it just fits my hand essentially like i am cramped into this from here to here spot uh, but it works i'm in there it's pretty comfortable you can choke up like this but this just feels wrong to me it's just not i don't know like i kind of do that on the emp edc nimble sort of um but it's way more comfortable it's less of a gap it's just i don't know it makes more sense to me on that knife um you can thumb flick this left-handed because that lock bar is not being pressed. You can use the flipper. And like I said, you get low enough. You can reverse flick it right-handed. Reverse flick. Detents a little lighter right-handed because you're not near the lock bar. Thumb flick, I, it's hard because I'm all over this lock bar to do that. So you got to kind of back off onto the clip and try to... I don't know. It just doesn't feel intuitive on that. And then you have the flipper. So um yeah it's a cool knife it really is i really like it it's unique it's different it's well made that's one thing about it is he didn't just make something that was unique and interesting and, and all that stuff he used good steel this is m390 steel he put a good grind on it. it's a hollow grind um that kind of like steps down which is cool um at least i think it's a hollow i guess it could be a flat but i'm feeling it because of the steps i don't know um, it's M390 heat treated to a 63 HRC, which is like optimal level. And, you know, somebody actually doing M390 correctly is awesome, right? Like, um, the edge on this, I don't know if Mike did this or what, but it's just epic. Um, but it makes a difference when you have M390 heat treated to optimal levels as opposed to like every Chinese OEM pumping out M390. I don't think any of them heat treat it right. Um, or at least like to what it's capable of, right? Um, sorry, I'm totally just not paying attention. Try that one more time. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, you can see it. It cuts very well. And it's probably going to hold that edge for a long time. Again, being that it's heat treated correctly. Uh, now, it's not going to be the, the hardiest steel because it's M390, but it's definitely tough enough and it's stainless. He did do a... Um, I guess this is like a heavy kind of stone wash. At first, I kind of thought it was a bead blast, which would not be good because I'd be rusting it. <laughs> but I think we're good. It looks like a stone wash. Haven't had any issues. I also have only carried this like one day for half a day so far. So uh, I don't have much to report on carry yet. Um, the clip worked. It's an interesting clip. I mean, look at that thing does kind of rattle a little bit um but going in your pocket it pops right over um and it actually works really well it's just interesting because it's very small it's curved like that and the way that this is designed is it like pops over your seam um this kind of thing right here pops over your seam i don't know if i did a close-up of this guy so there you go did my light I don't know. Um, so here you go. 0059, number 59. There's your lanyard hole for you fellas. Um, I believe he called this some kind of like lightning finish or something like thunder finish or something. Really cool milling right here on the insides of these scales. The backspacer almost disappears. Like you can barely tell the train. You can't feel the transition, but you can see them. So it almost gives it an integral look. Can see the pivot area there's that bearing pivot i call it because it really looks like a bearing and i think that's so cool um and then there's the uh blau rock 
logo, logo, I guess, little crest or whatever. It's a big European thing. See the lock bar, insert, stabilizer, over travel stop thingy. Uh, there's that clip I was telling you about. Interesting clip. There's the spine of the blade. Let me get it out for you. There's that blade. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Got a great edge on it. Great edge. There's the hole. So she said. See the stepping on the... I've never seen that on a blade before. I thought that was cool. The only thing I've seen like that is what Freeman does, which looks like absolute horse shit. Um, yeah, is there milling in here? I'm not taking this apart. He sent me the tool, but I'm not going to be a tool and take his knife apart like that. Look at that. What is that? Some kind of... Is that the insert? Yeah, it's the insert. Wow, that really comes down there. Um, yeah, not much in the way of milling, but it doesn't need it. It's not heavy. One thing I want to point out is look as this closes. Look at that hole in there. It's like this giant hole, and that's what the stop pin rides on or inside of. But how cool is that? There's your detent ball hole. And then the detent ball track like follows that hole. You see that track right there starting like right there. You can see it moving. Sorry, see it? That's the track. I don't know. I just thought that was really interesting the way the stop pin rides in that huge gap in there. Um, so, yeah, that's the Blau Rock Blades BRB3V2. <laughs> Sorry. Um, not the best left handed knife ever, but it certainly works, certainly gets the job done. If you are, have a smaller hand than I do, like medium or large. Sorry, it's my daughter. She's been sick again. And uh, I think she's just moving around. But um, yeah, if you have smaller hands, smaller medium hands, I think this is going to be very good for you. Um, and if you're right-handed as well. I think it's a really unique piece if you're right-handed. It makes sense. As a lefty, I'd probably stay clear of it. But anyway, I'll follow up with a full review of this most likely. Unless I call this an overview because I went pretty in-depth. Uh, I just don't have the carry, really, um, experience at this point. And cutting, I haven't really done any but what I just showed you, which went well until I, I don't know what I did. Um, so, there you go. Thank you, guys. Thank Naf Sergeant again for sending this in, brother. I really appreciate that. I love you all. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and i will catch you later